this is going to be, uh, it's probably going to bother some people out there. But it's an article by Robert J. Samuelson, and he writes fairly reasonable uh, stuff in economics. And the article came out in July in the Washington Post, and the title of the article is, Why Are We in This Debt Fix? Question mark. It's the elderly, stupid. Now, that's the, that's the title of his article carried in the Washington Post. And he points out some things here. And he says that in 1960, national defense was the government's main job. Matter of fact, national defense is in the Constitution. It's one of those things enumerated in Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution. And he says national defense was the government's main job, and it constituted 52% of the federal budget. In the year 2011, even with two wars, national defense is 20% of the federal budget and falling. Now, where's the big bite out of the federal budget? Well, it's Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other retiree programs that constitute roughly half of the federal budget. So that is the major problem, financial problem facing our country. That is the huge expenditures made on senior citizens. Now, where does the government get the money to spend on the elderly? Now, by the way, folks, I'm not picking on elderly because Walter Williams has been living one-third of the time our country has been in existence. So that means I've been living quite a while. Now, where does the government get the money to give to these uh, elderly programs? Well, it doesn't get it from the Tooth Fairy. It doesn't get it from Santa Claus. Where does it get it? The only way the government can give one American citizen one dollar is to first take it from another American. Now, there's kind of a perverse income redistribution. That is, the elderly in our country, they have the highest net worth. I believe close to 70% 70 of the elderly own their homes outright. There's no other age group that can uh, fit the category of owning their homes outright. Now, is it a kind of perverse income distribution, redistribution, to take from young people who are struggling 20 years, 30 years old, tax the heck out of them, and give it to people who are much better off than they are. I used to, when Miss, Mrs. Williams has now uh, departed after 48 years of marriage, but I used to argue with her because she used to accept senior citizen discounts when she went on, on the train to uh, visit my daughter in Richmond. And she would take senior citizen discounts and I would ask her, I said, now here you have a young couple on the train. They have two or three children. They're paying full fare. And here you are. You're married to a man who's in the top one or two percent of the American people so far as income. And you're taking a senior citizen discount. I mean, that seems to be perverse. But anyway, the point is, is that the kind of programs that we have for the elderly, I think they're, they're bankrupting our nation. Now, I know some of you are going to say, hey, Walter, I worked my whole life paying into Social Security, and I'm owed this money. Well, yes, yeah, somebody owes you it, but is it a 25-year-old? Is it a 35-year-old that owes you the Social Security payments? I'd say the congressman owes you Social Security payments. If I had my way, I would write to every senior citizen on Social Security. I say, look, we have about 16, 650 million acres of land that's owned by the government. If you will refuse any future Social Security payments, we will give you 100 acres of land to do with as you please. Take it or leave it. That's how I would solve the Social Security problem. And let's go to Grand Rapids, Iowa. Welcome to the show, Jerry. Well, thank you very much, Walter. This is a pleasure to speak with you. 
I'm getting so tired of people lumping Social Security in with entitlements such as food stamps, aid to children, and all the others that we have. Social Security was paid into by the people, and had the government not raided the war chest, there would be plenty of money in that account. And now it seems like the last couple of years, the radio hosts and the pundits have all joined the bandwagon in calling Social Security an entitlement. Well, well, let's let's look at this a bit. Now, it turns out that the person who retired in 1980 gets all that he ever put into Social Security in two and a half years. The person who enters the labor force in 1980 he will have to live until he's 92 years old to break even with Social Security. That is, it's a Ponzi scheme on top of being a bad deal. Now, the, the money that you receive from Social Security, where does that money come from? Does it come from the Social Security Trust Fund? No, it's nothing in the Social Security Trust Fund but IOUs. That's the, because our government leaders stole it. I, I know, but the question is, Who owes it to you? Should the person who is 30 years old, should he be taxed to take care of somebody who's 65 years old? Well, there are other programs, other ways to handle retirement income. Like how? And as far as the as far as the the person retiring in 1980, and he gets all of his money back in two and a half years, uh, that's an extreme. Awfully broad generalization. No, no, no. It's 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 factually true. No, it's factually true. How the market is doing, if no. the money is invested properly, uh, all those things play into how much that there would be into the in that Social Security account. No, the go- the government does. The Congress does not invest the money. Soon as FICA money is sent to Washington, it's immediately spent. No, they don't. Yeah, they don't invest in anything. But well, you, you just said it's invested. Pardon me? <laughs> you said it was invested. But no, th- look, look, th- the point yeah. is, the point is, I think that American people ought to recognize that Social Security was a mistake. It was not authorized by the United States Constitution. And we're living with the effects of that mistake. It won't work. It's going to blow up by at least 2030 or 2040. And it'll be nothing. It'll be economic catastrophe for your grandchildren.